So our guest today, Will, is a guy that exists that I don't know. Come on over, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Will, yeah. good to meet you. Howdy. Oh, no, for, I didn't nice. want you. I didn't want you sitting here because we need to fully appreciate the situation. Oh, this. Uh, there we go. A little twirl. Absolutely. That's beautiful. nice. You've got a combination like you could be at, like a Celtic Games. Yeah. Mixed with like you might be able to fix my transmission. <laughs> All right, so Will, what little I know about you is you're a little bit of a history buff, yeah? I enjoy it, yeah. Okay, I'm All a right. fan. This is actually a really cool story, but yes. that, you remember um, mm. Ernest Shackleton? The he Shackleton? tried to be the first to hit the South Pole. Expedition. And that didn't work. Then he tried to be the first to cross Antarctica, and that's when his ship was actually locked in ice. He took a five-man crew and went hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles through the wastes to find help and then charter a boat back to pick up the crew he left behind on the boat. Yeah, that's and actually saved my desktop all. background. Yeah, <laughs> this whiskey was found at one of the campsites that left behind, frozen in ice, not this one, but <laughs> Shackleton as a case of whiskey, basically. They brought it back to a, a fishing village and in a museum took it. They thawed it down, they did chemical analysis, and Sir Richard Patterson, a famous blender of whiskey, tried to recreate the whiskey that they found in those bottles. Using modern distillery malt, the closest Richard Patterson was able to get to the flavor of Ernest Shackleton's case of whiskey from the Lost Expedition. Well, that's absolutely sublime. Right. I love this. Yeah. So you got light and fresh and briny, but there's also some fruit notes blending through there, like almost melon. I'd almost call it jackfruit. Mm, I don't know that I've had jackfruit. Oh, never? I it has many iterations, but juicy fruit is based on jackfruit. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Because there's a lot of interesting historical anecdotes. Each of you are going to present an interesting historical fact or fiction. From memory. Or fiction. Jeez, okay. It could be real or made up. Mm. And whichever one is the most interesting, they will win that pour. I always get a pour, but they are winning a pour. Do you doubt my authority? Sure. What about now? Oh, uh, well, came on. Let's do yeah. this shit. Are you a whiskey drinker? Every now and again, yeah. Uh, what so. do you drink when you drink whiskey? Scotch. Peaty, dark scotch. Ah, oh, like. okay. Oh, yeah, so yeah. name a, you're like, oh, I want that. If you offered me a choice, I would say, give me the Lafroy. That's oh. what I want. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, so, we'll see. Two glasses, <laughs> one for me and the other, you guys are battling for the sippage. The determining criteria for who wins is basically which is the best story. Not necessarily mm. which was the real historical mm. fact. Okay. We don't I know what the whiskey is yet. We don't know yet. what it is yet. Way back in the day, right after we first, like America became a country, it's like, we won, f you English. It turns out that we thought the solution to the first thing we were gonna do as a country was to tax things. You already won, because it's a tax story. Things happened. <laughs> spreadsheets. Bad things happened. Just say spreadsheets happened. Spreadsheets happened. Ah! They end up having a rebellion take over Philadelphia to rebel against the new America. Mm -hmm. They took over the whole city. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the only reason they were kept from burning the city down or like rampaging was the city fathers and the town council yeah. sent them a wagon of whiskey. Uh, and we're like, hey guys, stay outside town, please. And uh, that's the only reason Philadelphia wasn't burned to the ground. That's, that's a pretty, just a pretty good story. Pretty yeah. decent story. All right, Will, more to that story. any historical anecdote that you think has entertainment value, you have to do better than that to win this pour. It's a little pour. I guess the stakes are pretty low at the beginning. So Cyrus the Great, Emperor of Persia. Okay. You might know him as the father of Xerxes from 300. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. the guy. Yeah, the that guy. Yeah. You know, he had the yeah. brilliant idea to try and conquer the steppe tribes to the east of him. The Eurasian steppe is the place that no one ever conquered for pretty much all of history. Right. So they're you know horse archers, the proto Mongols, the Scythians were the people he'd be fighting at the time. So he sends his armies deep into the steppe in the attempt to conquer them. And he gets pretty far, further than pretty much anyone ever had at this point. He did a pretty good job thus far, but the problem is they can just, as nomads, move further and further and further off into the steppe. While you lose bodies and man count? <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. The beleaguered Scythians, not so beleaguered at this point, they were pretty much fine, had the beautiful idea to set up a truce with them. Basically set up a beautiful feast, all the meat they could, all the liquor they could. Persians got drunk on their wine and on their liquor. The Scythians came back in and massacred them in their sleep. He had, his had more blood sport? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yours had more spreadsheets. More spreadsheets. Yeah. I think, I think you won the pour. Hey. Uh, you won the pour. Daniel, what is the pour? What you won was Starlight Bourbon. Yeah. This is a Hoover family winery in Indiana. 
makes an award-winning bourbon. 58% corn, really high rye. Ooh. 27% rye. High rye, you say. Have you been around the block with the other categories and landed on Smoky Scotch, or you just have had the opportunity to go deep into the other categories? I've drank a decent amount of whiskey in my life, and I've had people say, you have to try this. It's going to be your new favorite thing in the world. Yeah. I enjoy bourbons. I generally find myself going towards the more smoky side of things. It's yeah. just what I prefer. Yeah, yeah. However, I've been impressed by a great deal of bourbon in my life. There's a lot I like. Actually, y'all's Eleanor bourbon. Oh, um, MGP. That's really good stuff. Yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. I think he needs another port. What do you think of Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. There you go. What do you think about this one? This is one of my preferred craft bourbons if, I, if I'm picking from all over the US. I'm not an expert by any means, but what I'm getting, what I notice the first thing is cinnamon. Just a strong oh. hit of cinnamon to the it's nose. Good. You didn't win anything. I'm smelling that. Maybe some clove. <laughs> Smelling's <a> privilege. <laughs> Definitely seeing that on the nose. There you go. He's doing the legit thing for the episode. I know. You're <laughs> such a child. Mm. <laughs> Says the man in a top hat. <laughs> It almost tastes like charred wood to me. Yes. In a really good way. This is why I poured this for the pea scotch guy. Yeah. Because it's like, nah, this is hefty and rich. That it is. Just candy and sweet. And I'm working from memory because it's bullshit game. I sincerely appreciate this whiskey. All right. It's delicious. Do you want to go first on the story this time? Sure, why not? Okay. Yeah, it needs to be Whoa. robust. It needs to be worthy. There I could go. be telling the truth. I could not be. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no one knows. It. You can make it up. I'm going to guess that both of those stories were absolutely true. Yes. They smacked of truthiness. Was yours absolutely true? Partially true. Oh. A mixture of several stories, right. but true. Okay, hey, I think we should add another, la another layer. Okay. If you if you trick me, mm. then you get a, a double, another double thing. Can I just drink these at my leisure? Are we saving them for something? Well, you're gonna pick your favorite, you know so leave enough that you can okay. recall. That's a very good question. I think that deserves a bonus pour. That seems reasonable to me. Okay. Oh, look at the different color on these. You know, oh, you know what? Train That's wreck. lovely. I do value I'm sorry. Wow. his perception of the color difference. I think that deserves another pour. This episode brought to you by the Water of Life. This is actually a pretty special, fun project, you magnificent bastards. We're gonna be doing a live stream in a couple of weeks with the team that made the, the Water of Life uh, documentary mm -hmm. and the distillery team over at Brooklady. I think they pronounce it Brooklady. That's accurate. It's one of the many things that you see in the Water of Life, how to pronounce Brooklady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have a phenomenal history in whiskey and the water of life. I got a pre screening of it. To me, it was like a love letter to Scotch. Yeah. And it was amazing at giving context for um, the current state of Scotchdom and how we got here. Because what a lot of people understand to be Scotch, mm -hmm. that's a fairly recent development. Uh, all of the MVs that hang out with us for this live stream, there's going to be QA, so you can be asking the, the, the filmmaking team, you can be asking the distillery team. And there's going to be an exclusive Whiskey Tribe discount for the Water of Life. So, Daniel, when is the live stream happening? Two weeks, Friday, August 13th, 3 p.m. In the description, we're going to have a link for you to basically jump over to that page where the live stream is going to happen, and you can click a button to set a reminder mm. so you don't miss the live stream when it comes up. Daniel's going to make it so weird. People think I make it weird, he makes it. <laughs> it's going to get weird. So weird. I got most of them! So, prohibition. Yes. Mm. But what it meant was no one drank yes. because it was against the rules. Lots of politicians who were, uh, may or may not have had the last name Kennedy, who were a fan of the liquid beverage, is there another kind of beverage? <laughs> Decided that, hey, we need to get our hands on some good stuff because right now all the shit that's being brought in through the illegal channels yeah. is medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They reached out to Ireland and he was like, hey guys, we need a whole bunch of whiskey. Now don't worry. We're not gonna bottle it and sell it. We're just gonna keep it off the coast down by Cuba and Florida until this prohibition thing is over and it's okay. Right. And then we'll bring it in. Yeah. And the Irish were like, no, no, no. We can't be a part of that. So he went to Scotland. And <laughs> Scotland was like, how much money? Sure. <laughs> and so it, and all this scotch got put on a boat and sent down and bottled right. on a ship called... Wait. It didn't stay off the coast of Cuba, did it? Oh, it totally stayed off the coast of Cuba Good. and was Good. never sent into the U.S. Mm, good. On a, just for science, you know on what? a boat called the Cuddy Sark. Legal compliance. Hence the origins mm. of Cuddy Sark blended scotch. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting story. It's Will? actually a fairly modern blended scotch, unlike doers Can and... Can you best that yeah. story? So how much do you know about the Mongol Empire? Zero. Uh, Genghis? Kong. He was one of them. The way the Mongol 
empire worked for the most part is they had a Khan, which was the lord of all men who dwell in felt tents, is kind of what it means. Mm. And that being all of the steppe nomads, which were never united, and because the greatest warriors on the planet united, they pretty much made it all the way to Europe in the first place. And a thing you never think about, Genghis Khan, after the conquest of the Middle East, sent his finest general by the name of Subutai to survey everything that he controlled, which is the entire known world. So he sent a force of 2,000 men west to go figure out what the heck was out there. 2,000 people is not very many people, especially even by, you know, ancient army standards. That army made it as far as Georgia. Not Georgia the state, but Georgia the country. Yeah, the, yeah, first, yeah. the first Christian kingdom in Europe, weirdly enough. They encountered a nation that was preparing to go on a crusade at the order of the Pope. And they oh, had crap. mustered, they had mustered 70,000 Georgian knights prepared to go. Right. Yeah. These 2,000 guys are just looking for fun. <laughs> Show up with swords. Oh yeah, 70,000 knights plus over 100,000 regular troops. Right. One of the standard tactics the Mongols used was to attack, enforce, pretend like, oh God, there's so much stronger than us and we're gonna run away. They led them into, in formation, into a canyon. In that canyon, they had stashed archers around the sides. Mm, classic. And managed to, with a force of 2,000 men, turn the entire 70,000 man army and beat them against the walls of a canyon like an anvil. I forgot what your story was. Cuddy Sark. So he won. What? That's but, right. but, come on. But that mooching maneuver you did. Ah. Yeah. He, he poached the win from you. That's depressing. <laughs> he did. That's really too I bad. Respect. Okay, so true or not true? Yours is true. Nope. Whoa. It's the mythology around Cutty Sark oh. that if you look it up, could mm. like be interpreted sort of oh. in that direction, but it didn't actually happen. Really? Like that. He stole the win from you. He did. And your story was true. It was true. Oh, so you yep. did nothing. <laughs> <That's too bad. laughs> Gotta drown my sorrows here. Let's get him a pour of the right. method of madness. So, I've heard that's yours right there. Middleton pot still whiskey. So this is their unmalted barley percentage with malted barley. This is the same people mm -hmm. that make Jameson, that make Red Breast, that make Green Spot. So, oh, yeah, same, same story. Same giant corporation, but this is their experimental label. Oh. They took sherry and bourbon casks from their distillery and finished it in cherry wood. Cherry wood. Acacia. So uh, one of the straight. criteria for whiskey is it needs to be aged in an oak barrel with the exceptions of Ireland. Just needs to be wood barrel. And Japan. And Japan. Shaved candied ginger. Oh, I've been sipping on this for 10 minutes, man. Yeah. Jasmine flower. Candied ginger and jasmine. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite things out of Middleton. It's been a long time since I've had it, but it reminds me of Yellow Spot. Yeah, uh, I could see that. Gosh. A little bit older. I think Yellow Spot's much older than that. Actually, maybe not. I've got to think of my next story, so you start. The national drink of Mongolia, I still know a lot about steppe history, it's my favorite thing, mm -hmm. is a beverage called kulmus, which is fermented mare's milk. Oh. <laughs> what they do is, they take, they milk a mare, their mare they happen to be riding, and they put it in a leather bag. Yeah. And they set it on the side of their horse and they ride around. Leave it there for a few weeks and what you're left with. Like rancid. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> because of the yeast that naturally get in there in the bag, you're left with a liquor in a way. Uh, sitting, oh God. Sitting at the end of that. And not botulism? There isn't a whole lot else to drink over there. Yeah. So for a long time, that was the national liquor. <laughs> can you can you best the fermented mare's botulism story? And the a long history of the English uh, taxing people, people come up with ways to hide whiskey and in the Orkney Islands they're not highly trafficked with tax people or English soldiers because way the hell up there and at the time you could get there only by you know one still only by boat when someone's coming to collect taxes you have a lot of warning so they learn the town hey um, by the way there's a guy coming he's gonna collect taxes and punish people who are making illegal whiskey up here the tax guy arrives at the docks and he walks into town and the whole place is basically empty. But he discovers that there's this one house with a crowd and a bunch of people all wearing black. So he walks up and someone's like, hey, there's a funeral going on right now. One of the important people in town died. And he's like, oh, he walks into the house. Everyone's sitting quietly. Casket is 
is uh, decorated and honored in the middle of the room, and he sort of goes on his way, and while they're there, he's like, well, this is the perfect time. He searches the whole town, comes up dry, and goes on his way. Turns out they had hid all the town's whiskey supply and materials in and under the casket <laughs> that was draped in cloth in the yeah. middle of the room, and then and the adjourning tables, and including also in some of the chairs that some of the older ladies right. with their big white dresses had been sitting in right. in attitudes of prayer and worship. That wins for entertainment value. Oh, I beat the rancid milk. <laughs> oh, that wins for entertainment value. I'm gonna say it's not true. It's true. Absolutely Are documented. Are you gonna take his word for it, though? Yeah. That's true. Wait, no, you can't change it all that. We, this whole thing for, assumes that we're being honest. Are you Why are you gonna throw checker? doubt into the mix? No, yours, <laughs> I'm going to say, is true. No. Oh! Ah! Now, on a technicality, though. Oh, no. No, right. technicality works. Yeah, works. What's the tech? Thomas is a lighter version of the true mare's milk liquor, air dog. Oh, of course, the air dog. All right, so a pour and a bonus pour for you and a pour for him. Here, this is for you, sir. And what you are drinking is yoichi. Oh, yoichi. yeah, we're yes. in Japan. Now, in the Japan. early days of Japanese whiskey, the first real whiskey made on the island of Japan was made by Masataka Takatsuru under the ownership of Yamazaki Centori distillery that you know now, which is Shinjiro Tori, was his boss. When he left Shinjiro Tori's Yamazaki and Suntory, he went up north to start his own distillery up into the Yoichi region of Japan, which happened to replicate the climate and, uh, and qualities of Scotland almost exactly, and uh, proceeded to make the whiskey that he had learned how to make when he apprenticed in Scotland at Springbank Distillery and Longmorn. So what you are tasting is a Japanese guy trained in Scotland, taking that craft to Japan and making Scottish style whiskey single malt in yep. the northern Japanese island. And if you are a fan of scotch, then you're very likely to find a lot of things you enjoy in Japanese whiskey. What do you think? In actual Japanese whiskey. This reminds me of a space side I yes. had at one point. You know a PD space side. Yeah. Oh, a robust pour. The okay. stakes are high for this final round. Who's going first? I think it's, it's my turn, turn, but I'm yeah. trying to think of a story. My I, my mind is legitimately going blank right now. Distracted. What would be a good story? Yes, very. Yeah, that's a problem. You should clip the mic on the pad. Oh, that's when a brilliant I, idea. On the chest here. Oh, fine. that would have worked, yeah. Lay my, that's, that's fine. <laughs> it's fine, I'm busy thinking of a story. Yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. Get some of that mare's milk. Just built. tuck on in, get some of that mare's milk. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Hang on. You're gonna know the answer to the story. I just realized this is not gonna work, but he might not. But it could be entertaining. Yeah. In the early days of Texas whiskey, there were two Texas whiskey distilleries, Balcones, Garrison, who were sort of fighting out for who was first on things. Mm -hmm. One of the original founders of Balcones, a guy named Chip Tate, he along with Jared Hempstead, they got put on the map by winning Whiskey of the World in London. So on the back of like this growth, they get investor money. <laughs> Only Chip Tate doesn't like opinions that aren't his. These people gave him money, but not their and then they started having opinions, and he was like, F you and your opinions. And it escalated so dramatically that at one point, he walks into the distillery armed yeah. and starts talking about how if any of those guys show up here, I'm gonna shoot them and kill them all. Allegedly. Mm. Allegedly. <laughs> and on the backs of that moment, right. he is, ousted from Balconis, right. and Jared takes over and builds it into the Balconis we know and love today. Welcome to the wild west of the early days of Texas whiskey. This is only like, what, 12, 13 years ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Will, you're up. All right, stick with what I know here. About 1911, Germany has this idea where they're gonna, they're gonna go to war with France. This is the dawn of World War I. These are the first two major powers that are gonna get involved with this thing, other than Austria-Hungary, but that never mattered. So. <laughs> they, Germany's idea to beat the greatest land power of all time, that being France, is to take a million man army, the largest army ever amassed at this point, and bring it down through the Netherlands and smash into them. And right. a small point where they can break into France and take them apart from the inside. Because wasn't going it the right French Alps giant. that like took down Hannibal and uh -huh, all this? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're seeing it, you're seeing it. Jesus. Their idea was to walk right through and say, hey, don't fight us, we're going to deal with France. You can't possibly resist this great army. <laughs> and they say, absolutely, we fucking can. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> the Dutch put up an incredible fight. They had a network of forts that were dug into mountains where they had cannons sticking out, the most like early steampunk sci-fi sort of shit you can imagine. There was no chance. And that was what ended up bringing 
England under the war was this agreement they had signed with them to come to one another's aid. However, they didn't come to their aid nearly in time or even a few months after that. They did decide, okay, now I'm fucking have to declare war on them. That's what we have to do. Right. <laughs> they blew up every bridge in the country, every railroad line, and near the end, they ended up flooding huge reserves of their farmland with seawater keep the Germans out. So for purely the scale of the mayhem, yours was like... Yeah, that's small mayhem. It was like a pissed off that's guy. Like, that's like office politics mayhem. With a handgun. With guns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Will takes this one. Yeah, like right. that's fair. Now, if you trick me when I try and decide whether or not it's the whiskey talking or the history talking. Oh. That's yeah, true, that's true. Of course it's true. Yeah, I know that happens. Know so, you get, yeah, you that really so you get nothing. Yeah. You get nothing. Now you, I think that story I know is, what that is true. Is your story true? It's impossible to be true. What? Oh! Uh, it's partially true, oh. but the country was Belgium. Oh. Yeah, that's you not said Belgium? The German army could not have gone through the Netherlands. I was banking yeah. on your lack of geography. <laughs> like, that's yeah, all yeah. I was doing. You could bank on a lot of knowledge <laughs> deficit. <laughs> hey, old hey. friend. All right, why do you like Laphroaig so much? What is it about this whiskey that's your old standby? Well, before I enjoyed whiskey more, I would have said, because it hits the spot. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. It doesn't burn up front, it burns on the way down where yes. I want it to. Mm. That's something yes. I really appreciate. Yeah, fresh and vibrant up front and then it a is. lingering. And it leaves a taste of smoke in your mouth, which is, as far as an aftertaste goes, my very favorite lingering flavor. Yeah. yeah. It is smoke going in, smoke lingering, and all the floral notes and excellent things are in the center, which yeah. is what I appreciate. I like totally agree with that. Smoke in, transient, like complexity and then it leaves you with the best part. I've Again. never heard that description of Lafroig, but that's really accurate. So besides the Lafroig tin, because you came in, to, uh, in here already loving that, your standout favorite was Shackleton? It's gotta be Lafroig Shackleton method. You're that's something else. Game show has no real ending. You don't think I have an ending for this? No. I think the only thing you thought about was the top hat. Wrestling we totally have an ending for this. All the whiskey. Yeah. Because he got like what? Nine points? <laughs> and you had, let's say seven. <laughs> so there's a there's a final five, five point bonus point round. <laughs> we do a high speed scooter skid length competition. Oh, I got that. The kilt situation. Yeah. Billows out. Pocket of air lifts him. Yeah. It's just it's, it's like cruising. Mary Poppins. It's like Mary Poppins. <laughs> it's like, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> Game on. Look at him. He's scared. He's he's Googling how to not wipe out on a scooter like a bitch. Oh wait, that's all right. <laughs> what a shit. Bear witness to my faithful steed. That is fabulous. That's all you have to do is go this. Where's the start line where you hit the brake? Alright, so I'll show you the technique. Here, you want a little sip of this while we're waiting? Yeah. That's, that's What's good. in there? Is that all of them? I don't know, it's some mix that he had that he thinks is a prize. Oh, but we're just drinking it now. Get up, that way <laughs> Perfect. One. The combination of all of today's whiskeys. Well done, mm. my skirted half twin brother. Thank you. Huzzah. More importantly, Daniel Lust. Grace Poseidon. <laughs>